Welcome to the Veterinary Marketing Podcast, where it's all about helping your veterinary practice attract, engage, and retain clients. Broadcasting a new podcast every Monday from sunny Southern California, here's your host, Brandon Bashirs. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode number 153 of the Veterinary Marketing Podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. I really appreciate you for being here. Today, before we begin, and by the way, we're going to be talking about Vitus Vet with Dr. Mark Olcott. It's going to be a great episode. If you've ever wondered how should you be following up, how often should you be following up, and how can you retain the current clients that you have coming into your veterinary practice, that is an important question, and I hope you have been wondering that because we're going to be covering it today. It's going to be great. So uh, before we begin, though, I want to mention a few things. First, if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe in iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify, wherever you connect or collect your podcasts. uh, I'm there. The other thing that I would like to mention that is if you haven't done so already, be sure to head on over to the Veterinary Marketing Nerds Facebook group. Additionally, if you would like some help with your veterinary practices advertising, if you're looking to get into the Google AdWords space, if you're looking to get into the Facebook ad space, you go to whiskercloud.com forward slash advertising and you can get help from me there. So without further ado, though, let's jump into today's episode. We are lucky enough to have Dr. Mark Olcott, the founder of Vitus Vet. I think he's got a really cool solution. It's very comprehensive. We talk about text message marketing, push notification marketing, Postcard marketing. I know this is a digital marketing podcast, but it's important that you mix up your media. Um, I think it's very, very valuable to be engaging with the most valuable clients in your practice, which are those who are actually coming in and paying you. So without further ado, here's Dr. Mark Olcott, and we talk about VitusVet. This week we have Dr. Mark Olcott from Vitus Vet, second time on the podcast. I'm sure you've been waiting for this moment again. So exciting. I'm just kidding. It's great to have you on the podcast. I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me today, but um, I'm super excited. I wanted to have you back on because it sounds like you've been uh, just up to tons of cool things since we last talked, which I'm going to look this up here, but why don't you tell everybody uh, about yourself really quick, give give the how you got into the industry and how you started Vitus Vet, because I think that's a great story. I'm going to look up when the last time you were on the podcast was. Yeah, appreciate the opportunity to be with you again here. It's been an interesting journey. I, like many people who work in the animal health industry, I wanted to be a veterinarian since I was really 12 years old. Never changed my mind. Um, I've had a pretty diverse career as a veterinarian, and not only um, general practice, but I've also spent the last half of my career working as an emergency vet in a large uh, emergency and referral hospital in the metro dc area and i went back to business school a few years ago because i wanted to solve a problem that i was running into very frequently um, namely that i couldn't access patient records after hours and it's a big problem i mean we were it was adversely affecting patient care i was having to spend a lot of pet owner's money repeating tests that had just been done, sometimes even just an hour or two ago. But again, when you start thinking about why this is happening, it's still, our industry is still really dependent on the telephone and the fax machine. And so VitusVet started off as an app that allowed pet owners to tap into their general practitioner's database and access their full medical record in an emergency. So beyond just portals to really access lab work and medical notes and digital images. So that's really popular with pet owners. Um, And as over the last couple of years, the platform has really evolved to to include not just mobile, but we do texting and picture sharing and email reminders, even postcard reminders. And the sort of underlying idea behind all of this and the message I really want to help share with my colleagues is we really need to make it a lot easier uh, to do business with our practices. You know, it's not just millennials that don't want to talk to you on the phone anymore. There's people are so busy, you know, Brandon, they just, if uh, like my wife, if she thinks, oh, I need to make an appointment for the dog, if she thinks of that at 10 o'clock at night, you want to be able to capture that intent. 
If your message is call me in the morning or stumble through Google to find my website, maybe I'll do it, but maybe I won't, you know? Absolutely. I think that that's uh, in, in general, just huge. If you think about any way that you as a consumer, so, you know, veterinarian and veterinarian practice manager, and everybody listening to this is a consumer at the same time, right? How do you like to engage right. with brands and businesses? If you look at you every single retail opportunity right now, it's just, there's so much change happening. Like Target has drive up orders, same day delivery orders, pickup orders. Walmart has the same thing. Um, Amazon has prime same day delivery. Everything is becoming more instant and not only that, but multi-channel, whatever medium you want to do, you know, it's getting to the point where you can just talk to Alexa and say, you know, order me a pizza and then a pizza shows mm -hmm. up. And yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that's the genius of Amazon, right? It's not necessarily low prices. It's just radical convenience and simplicity. Exactly. That, that gap between impulse and purchase, uh, they've gotten it down so close. And that, I guess that's one of the beauties of, of uh, having a powerful app for your practice. I mean, let's, you know, a couple of smart college students can make an app in a weekend. Making an app is not the challenge. The challenge is making one that your clients will actually use. And our belief is you've got to give them something of value. You have to earn your way onto their smartphone. So if you give them something of value, then they give you the right to have a conversation with you and you can use that channel for education and reminders. But if your message to them is download this app, it'll help you make appointments. That doesn't really resonate with them and they won't do it. Yeah. So you do have to give them something of, uh, something of value. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think that, so let's talk about the different mediums that, that VitusVet uses. Cause I think that that is uh, pretty important. Um, in just, it's probably the biggest area. Uh, yeah. The, the biggest area that it's changed over the last couple of years, we started off as an app. Well, we've now evolved so that really we can reach out to pet owners um, through whatever channel they want. So we have this really interesting intelligent reminder algorithm that uses text and email and the app and finally postcard. If none of that works, we can send out postcards too. And what we found is through a combination of all those channels, it just, it, 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 we make it more difficult for pet owners to slip through the cracks. You know, like I talk to practices pretty frequently where if they've only got maybe a third of the client email addresses, and if they're not doing text reminders, uh, if you start to think about it, okay, so I'm, I'm really only doing postcards and I don't think I'm that all that unusual. If something comes to me in the mail that looks like a postcard, it just goes in recycling. Yeah. You know? But so I will it, glance at it though. Like when I'm walking to the mailbox, I will take a look at it though. That's one thing that, you know, I think most people will do. They'll shuffle through and then that is a branding reminder. I don't know. I, I still think that there is some value to that, but like it's not, if you're only doing that, you're missing so many, so many opportunities. That, that's exactly right. You know, so it's not that they don't work. I think they do. They work as part of an integrated uh, multi-channel operation where if this doesn't work, we'll try this. If that doesn't work, we'll try this. And that's really um, almost impossible to do if you have multiple different vendors providing all those different services. It's almost like they don't talk to each other. You know, what we found is one outcome of this is a dramatically reduced postcard expenses. In fact, our software usually pays for itself because people, practices end up sending far fewer postcard reminders because we're able to get clients in through a text or an email. So um, it's just a different how the uh, people's preferences are changing, you know, what they want, how they want to be communicated with. They don't necessarily want to talk to you. And, you know, it's also interesting, Brandon, I think about this as well as, is can this also be one of the reasons why there's a turnover problem in most veterinary practices from the front desk, especially the CSRs, man, they're slammed up there with telephone, phone, phone. And I can't help but think that a big reason for that is if you're forcing your clients to call you for something as simple as a nail trim, um, no wonder there's front desk chaos. So 
I think if you simplify their life, if you make it easier for these sort of digital communications, um, it has m- many other dividends. I totally agree with that. And that's that's a super interesting point. So there's a few things that, I, well, like to expand on that, I think generally people that work in veterinary practices, uh, especially reception staff, they are in there because they love animals and they're typically not people persons <laughs> to say it politely, right? And so mm-hmm. you'll get, especially like, I remember I went to this one cat clinic one time that we were helping and it was local. So I went in and helped. And I remember the front desk staff was the most unsocial I was like, it makes sense why they work in a cat clinic. They just want to hang out with cats all day, right? Um, and like, that's okay, but that's the person that's the face of your business. And so, you know, making it so that it, like, limiting the chances for failure with that, I think is is right. super helpful, you know? And I'm not, I, I'm treading lightly here because I know there's tons of amazing people in, in the industry that are doing awesome things, but you have to really be you know real with who is your front desk staff and are they trained salespeople because ultimately that's their job and they probably didn't sign up because they wanted to be setting appointments and following up and doing you know that kind of work in general probably but it, you're just gonna have to to guess on that but let's let's talk more about this texting um stuff because texting is tremendous you know across every single channel that that i do with marketing um, texting typically has the highest open rates. In some cases, it's as high as 98%, um, yeah. which is ridiculous. The thing is, and I get people to ask me all the time, they're like, hey, how can we do texting? And I'm like, well, we could set up a Twilio account and then we set up webhooks and then we use Zapier and then we connect it and then hopefully it works. And then, you know, we create campaigns and it's difficult and expensive. And so, I think that it's tremendously beneficial, but the problem is it's complicated if you don't have a like inclusive solution. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. So tell tell me about that. And you were mentioning also how cool it is that you have a, a practice line. Cause I think that probably if people are doing texting in their practice, especially if they're small practices, they're just using their own cell phone. And yeah, that's exactly right. And and all of those have limitations, you know, as I, as I said, when we started off, I've been in this industry for over 30 years now. And I know that, If it's not simple, veterinary practices are not going to do it. So we've built that into our two-way texting and picture sharing solution so that it really is, it's uh, it's just really simple. It's really easy. It's it's a very powerful channel to not only send out communications like reminders, but it's also a great way to remove the friction as you were talking about, right? How do I make something simple? So if I can just, uh, what we do with our solution is we, we turn your landline into a textable phone number and uh, allow pet owners, your clients to text into you because the, our solution integrates with your practice management software system. A couple of cool things come out of that. Number one, you know who it is that's texting you Right. So you don't have to ask, well, who is this? You know, a, a solution that's not integrated, you don't know who's texting you. The other cool thing about this is all these conversations can be documented from a medical legal standpoint. So, for example, if a doctor is uh, on their busy surgery morning, is wanting to update clients on how a dental went, um, they could take a picture, um, send a text to the client that, hey, she did really great. Come pick her up at five o'clock. Um, frankly, that's easier for the doctor. It's easier for the practice team. And I think it's actually what the pet owners want too. <laughs> you know, they, they don't want to play phone tag either. A lot of them are at work and trying to, to talk to the vet in between appointments or something. So since, um, you know, our, our, it's called Vitus Vet Connect and it's actually a, an app that practice um, team can download on to, if you have an iPad for the practice, you can even download it onto your own personal phone. And it allows you to log in as the practice. So it's anonymous. And again, we use the practice landline, turn it into a textable number. So it's pretty seamless solution. And it dramatically cuts down on the phone burden on the front desk. Less phone calls, less chaos, less craziness, better communication. We think that's a win for everybody, you know? Definitely. 
That's really cool. And um, I was just thinking that if you had that as a textable number, I'm interested to see like specifically how many people are texting uh, practices just without knowing if they can text them or not. That would be interesting to find out. I bet there are people that are texting practices. Um, just A lot know. of them, you know, it's, it's funny. Like it, there's just, I mean, you said yourself, be, if we're honest with ourselves, how many of us would rather just, especially for something like making an appointment, I really want to have to talk to somebody for that, whether it's, it's to make it like an open table, like, right make it easier for that client you get more of it um so if you allow them to text that and have the exchange make it easy i think that's a big uh that's a big reason for non-compliance there's a lot of people out there that probably want to do the right thing but if you force them through the telephone they're just they're not going to do that definitely and it's also uh, pretty cool. There are Google ads that have extensions that you can text directly from there. Um, so if somebody was searching for you and if they're a person who doesn't like talking on the phone, like I'm thinking about my wife specifically, if she can at all avoid a, a phone conversation, she will right. absolutely, because yep. she's watching watching the baby and stuff and usually he's screaming and crazy. So like if you <laughs> wanted to schedule a spay or a neuter or a preventative and you could just hit that button and text and set up an appointment. That would be so much more convenient. I'm sure the conversion rate would, would be pretty tr tremendous. And you can also measure that so well, which right. is cool. So that's, that's just awesome. So between you got you push notifications, um, texting postcards. Um, so that's just for follow-up of your, your current clients, which is really, really cool. You could add in, the texting for the ads, which would be very cool for act, attraction of, of new clients. But I think though, you know, in general, it's just, it makes a lot of sense because it's, it's the actual clients you've already converted that, you know, have pets right. that are going to be coming into the practice. So it's that bottom of the funnel that once you set it up, it runs and works for you. So it's just you know, tremendous. Yeah. So it's interesting that um, I, almost every practice manager in the United States knows how many new clients they got last month. They also should be asking how many they lost, how many churned, right? So if you've got 120 new clients last month, that's awesome. But what if 130 clients flipped into inactive? In other words, they haven't been in to see you in 18 months. Now all of a sudden that's not so good. So we think there's a whole other practice inside your database you're just a little bit, if it was just a little bit easier to do business with you. So 20 years ago, you know, even 10 years ago, you didn't have to be that good at this. It, it just wasn't that competitive with what's happening now with other uh, folks coming after pharmacy revenue, what's happening in the industry with um, uh, Walmart opening veterinary practices inside something like a thousand of their locations over the next three to four years. I think it's important that uh, we just take their lead and make it as easy as possible to do business with you. That's the Absolutely. key. Thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, so it's it sounds like that you have a bunch of you know I'm sure you have good segmenting tools and ways to you know make sure that you're connecting with people at the right times and things. What's kind right. of the best way that people can see that in action? I think that that probably would be helpful for for them to see it kind of in action and get a, a demo. What's the best way for them to get a demo of see exactly how it works, what every, what all the bells and whistles are and, and all that good stuff. Yeah, they can come to our website. There's a way to request a demo there. It's vitusvet.com, V as in Victor, I-T-U-S-V-E-T.com. You can shoot an email to info at vitusvet.com. Um, those are probably the easiest ways there. There's a lot of information on our site, but yeah, seeing a live demo of what exactly it looks like and what you're able to do through the pretty powerful platform. So those are probably the easiest ways to get all of us. Wonderful. Well, everybody go check it out, get a demo and get started and connecting with your, your current clients more frequently. Thank you so much, Dr. Olcott for being on the podcast. I really appreciate it and uh, have a Thanks fantastic day. Have. Yeah. Thank you. You too. All right. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Head on over to VitusVet. Be sure to check out a demo. See if it fits for your practice. To me, it's a no-brainer because you're going to be focusing on 
engaging and retaining those current clients who are coming into your practice. It's not just trying to attract new clients, but it's actually trying to retain the clients that you have, trying to protect them from being stolen by other practices and making sure that they're being followed up with and that their pets are being taken care of as best as possible. So head on over to vitusvet.com, check them out. Be sure to let them know you heard about them on the podcast. All right, have a great day, everybody. I'll see you on the next week's episode.